I went out to the good old brick lane, good old bricky lane, right? Good old bricky lane over the weekend, have a bit of a walk during bank holiday weekend, see the people, see the sights and stuff. And you know what I realised? I realised I hate going to those kind of places because I hate personalities. There's something about daytime personalities as opposed to nighttime personalities I just despise. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that in nighttime... Because my eyesight ain't great. I can hardly see people. I can hardly make out their faces. I just see their silhouettes. Most of them are wearing black. Most of them are kind of like slipping and sliding in and out of flipping clubs anyway. So there's not a lot of like standing around and posing under the sun. But this past weekend in Brick Lane, yo, people were out in force naturally. Because it was nice weather. That place is a good place to hang out. There's cool bars, cafes, places to eat, things to look at graffiti wings to kind of take pictures in front of and all of that malarkey and i realized quite quickly that you know what i actually despise personalities that's why i realized why i don't tend to go out to those type of places in the first place i tend to avoid them anyway because just there's just too many too much of that everyone's an individual everyone thinks they look really unique everyone's kind of screaming with what they're wearing right there it's literally everyone's walking around in all caps but every letter is colored if that makes sense, right? Imagine that. Everyone's in all caps, bold, underlined, but every single color, every single letter, sorry, is colored in a different color. And sometimes even the bold underlining has a different color underneath it. And I just can't handle that. It's just too much personality. I need my personalities toned down a bit, which is why I kind of like where I live as well. I'm kind of out of the mix, just regular people. And everyone's trying to scream or shove their flipping passion down your throat, right? Because in Brick Lane, you can spot the people far away. From far away, you can spot, oh, this person's got a passion for indie, indie music. This person's got a passion for photography, passion for fashion, passion for fucking street art, passion for sneakers, passion for streetwear, menswear. You kind of see them screaming, oh, this guy DJ. Like, it's just, oh, it's just too much. It's too much. Much. I can't do it. I can't do it. And I guess because may, may, maybe it's an insecurity. Maybe it's a reflection of my own self. Maybe I think that I scream personality when I'm walking down the street, right? As you can tell, I look very, very normal and very well adjusted and very plain and very middle of the road and very normie and very basic bitchy. But there's something about being around these type of people that just gives you a bit of a headache. I don't know. It was starting to disturb my frontal cortex. I was like, ah. Or it could just be I hate people. That could also be the thing. Maybe deep down, deep down inside my flipping soul, I just despise and hate people. And that's okay. It's okay to hate people. I finally realize and come to grips, come to the understanding that it's perfectly fine to hate people. And maybe I might be that type of person, which is strange because I think I'm very sociable. I'm very friendly. I'm very open. I'm very chatty. Um, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, which is something I don't really like about myself. The slight element, I've got 5% people pleasing thing in me, which is why sometimes I do negatively, negatively react to some people that I cover in the pod who are, you know, who have that as a front personality. I think my people pleasing thing is at the back, but it's still something that I'm kind of having to come to grips with. So because of that, I try to avoid all these different places. And also it could be as well, because I experienced it all before. I've done all this stuff before, so maybe because I've done it before, it's kind of a bit like, you know, whatever to me. Um, it is quite nice, actually, I'm not going to lie, to walk around that kind of area and see a whole new generation of people, though. I'm not going to lie. You see a whole new generation of folks that I never saw before because I think the saddest thing ever is to go around those type of areas and see the same type of people I was seeing when I was going out. That's not a good thing. That means those people haven't evolved, they haven't progressed, they haven't flipping grown up, they're just still doing the same thing. I'm, I'm glad I don't see the same people around it because if that was the case, I'd be sad. Maybe they see me and think, oh my God, what, what's this boomer doing here? But I'm glad I don't see the same people I was hanging around over there. But when I was walking around, um, um, I think I'll get each to, towards the end, happened to bump into this guy who I thought would look quite cool, personally. But when you look at it a bit further, you're like, oh shit, maybe he wasn't that cool. There was this guy walking past me who had like a, you know, what are those bottles? Um, I think it's like Elephant Foot or Big Foot. I forgot what the what the wine brand is called, but it's some it's a it's a brand that's got like a foot on it. Um, it's a kind of a basic um five pound, ten pound one that you get from Tesco's, and you're swigging on one of those white wine ones walking down the street. But he was kind of holding it, he was kind of holding a bottle, like he was holding like a bottle of Coca Cola or like a bottle of like beer. So trying to cover as much as it is possible. 
which you can't really because bottle of wine is quite a big bottle, but he was still trying to cover it that way. He wasn't holding it like a wine bottle. He was trying to make it look like it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and he was drinking. I thought he looked quite cool. And it also reminded me a little bit of the time that I, one of the last times I remember being out in Brick Lane with some of my cool hipster friends, um, a few of them who've kind of grown up and gone on to do other things. And one in particular um, who's gone on to Yugo, actually, big up Yugo wherever he is now. No, I think he's in Australia, sorry. My friend Yugo who went on to start creating loads of really cool custom made um hats that he does you know the kind of like hot boy no you know the kind of hot man hat right the kind of hot boy, hot man hat he kind of makes those um to order and stuff really flipping cool dude i love that dude and uh, i used to hang around him quite a bit it was kind of us me him and danny and a few other people like you know the the, the hips are cool black kids in east london right the ones that are just that are just plowing down anything that moved or attempting to those guys were well, i won't because i was a fucking loser i was the one that was kind of fighting for the scraps but i remember when the last times we went out we were out all night Saturday and all day mo Sunday morning and we were just still out wired right in our clothes from the Saturday night and we're walking around Brick Lane and we bought and we bought like a bottle of white wine to share between the three of us. I think we didn't have enough money and we we're all taking turns swigging it walking down the street and we felt like fucking rock stars. Now in, you know, thinking back to it now, zooming back out, we probably didn't look like rock stars. We probably looked like addicts. We probably looked like losers. But at that particular moment, we felt so good. I had like my skinny jeans on, Dr. Martin's jeans tucked into the boots, my little fucking mohair jumper, the black and white striped ones. If you know me back then in East London, you don't know why I'm going with that black and white mohair jumper. You know I was on fucking, you know, cool, hot boy kind of time. And walking down the street, I remember thinking we were looking so amazing. So when I saw that guy, it made me remember that. But it also made me think, oh shit, maybe that's an alcoholic thing, right? Maybe. Like, because at that time, when I saw him, it was like Monday morning. No, it was like Monday afternoon. So it wasn't even like Sunday. It was like bank holiday Monday afternoon. And I saw him walking on the street and I was like, oh, maybe that's not such a good thing. That he's casually drinking a bottle of white wine to the face at like 4 p.m. with no one else. Because it's one thing when you're around people, because somebody could surmise, oh, you guys were in the park earlier and you got this bottle left over and you're just sharing it between each other and try to finish it before you jump on the bus or whatever, or before you go home, you know what I mean? But when you just by yourself swigging it, you look wild. And then it also made me think about today, I was listening to a bonus episode of Tim Dillon podcast, and he was basically saying that how drinking is only cool up until your mid-20s. Then after that, it becomes cool again when you're like 50 plus. And I think that's kind of true. I think there's some truth to that. And you can believe someone like a Tim Dillon because he was an ex-party boy. He used to do a bunch of coke when he was younger, especially in his teenage years, which is, I, I think it's kind of crazy. But I've heard this story a lot from people who didn't grow up like I did because I grew up in a very conservative, very rules-driven African household. So I wasn't really allowed to do anything. I kind of had to do everything really late, which is a blessing and a curse. But I heard a lot of people who grew up in like, quote-unquote, normal households with no real rules, they were drinking and doing drugs when they in their like teens sometimes early teens and i think tim dylan says he was literally sniffing lines of coke when he was like 13 or something i was like whoa but the good thing about that sort of stuff is that you get your system really quickly you do a lot when you're young but you get your system very very quickly so when he says oh yeah you know what actually it's a far better thing to kind of drink until your mid-20s and then give up and then kind of continue on again maybe in the 50s i kind of agree with that because i think he's sober now as well and he said he could he could definitely see himself drinking again when he's 50 or something but nowadays he's got no desire to he doesn't look that chic doesn't look that cool and that's very true like have you ever been in a bar and you've seen somebody that looks your age but they're way more sloshed than you you're not like enamored you're only enamored and kind of smiling when it's somebody kind of young you're not really you're not really doing it with someone that looks like you is like you know or looks to be in your sort of age range just slosh you're like Ugh, brother grow up man like what going for you man get it together and i think that's what i kind of saw when i saw that guy i was like shit man all you need is one example one reflection of yourself and then suddenly you start to realize oh no one reflection of your past behavior and suddenly you start to realize just how destructive or how weird you looked back then but in the moment you don't realize it in the moment you really don't because again no one could have told me anything back then <clears throat> i thought i was the hottest of the hottest i was walking around the streets with my fucking cool friends throwing parties going to all the private view things like living the life and i think that's a good thing too because even though i didn't do stuff when i was early in my years 
I feel like because I had a very full and rich sort of like, you know, East London hot boy kind of like cool guy lifestyle thingy, whatever that's called. And I did the whole thing, right? I did the whole corny thing of being a promoter. I did the whole corny thing of DJing. I did the whole corny thing of going to loads of vice parties, of going to loads of ID parties, of going to loads of private view, all that sort of corny nonsensey stuff, right? I did all that stuff. Because I got out of my system early, now I'm not, I don't really have a need for it. You know, I, I'm not really bothered. I don't really care. Um, it's not really something that kind of drives me. And I'm also not trying to prove anything to anybody. So, you know, you can just let the kids do their thing. Because that was the one thing that was quite nice to see. I'm not going to lie. Seeing all the, like, the cool kids out there um, doing their thing, you know, being cool and being young and expressing themselves through their clothing and shit and letting, you know, screaming their personality through their outfits was kind of nice to see. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of nice to see. A whole new generation of people are not any, you know, millennial boomer types like me there trying to hog up the limelight or trying to take up space. Just letting those kids do what they do was kind of nice to see. But I did realize quite soon that, you know what? I'm not a fan of the personalities and I kind of like me staying in my own little weird bubble where I am now. It's kind of isolating. I'm not really in the mix as I should be, which is why I, should, I go to probably clubs a lot. It's probably the only time I feel like tapped in. But, I do like it. I'm not gonna lie. I do bloody like it. So big up Brick Lane. Quite a nice time. And 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 the other thing as well that that was funny. Yo, that bagel shop is still. There's still queues outside that fucking bagel shop. You know, it was fucking jumping. Um, bagel bake. So like you know, I think they've, they, they, there's there's some weird story going on with them. I think I remember reading somewhere. Don't hold me to this, but something about the owners, about the kid killing the owner. I don't know. Something crazy. I'm not even going to try and go into it because I don't really know much about it. But it was kind of wild um, what the story was relating to the fucking bagel shop from Brick Lane. The one with the white sign, not the one with the yellow sign. Although I've heard, even from back in the day, I never, I never actually stepped foot in the yellow sign one. I'm not going to lie. I always, always went to the bagel, the original bagel shop with the white sign. But I did hear that the yellow one has the best, um, what do you call it, desserts. So if you want cakes and stuff, the other one is obviously better. But yeah, the, the queue outside that shop was fucking wild. Um, was kind of sad to see the that when next to the bagel shop is at the top of the road on the corner. There used to be like a wine bar, cocktail bar thing that's completely closed down. It's prime real estate as well. It's all boarded up. I never understand that sort of thing. Like, why go on for that? It's a it's a shop. It's in prime, you know, I think prime real estate area over there. But it's completely boarded up. Like, no one, you know, no, other, no one's taking it over or anything. It's just been left to flip and ruin. I don't really understand why that fucking happens all the time. It's a really, really, really ideal location to have a store. Um, I, I would assume. Again, I don't, you know, I've never owned a store. So maybe I'm talking out my ass in this regard. But I think it's a really good area. But for some reason... No one's taking it up. So that was kind of sad to see. But I did happen to get these glasses, as you can see here. These new shades that I kind of, I'm donning now at the moment. They were also purchased on that street for £10. You know, these little novelty glasses I bought to kind of mix up my look on here. If you're on podcast and obviously, you know, annoy some people who don't like some of my coggles, some of my goggles that I wear, especially when I'm critiquing fashion people. It's always funny, isn't it? Because I'm critiquing all this stuff on my pod and then, you know, I've got these fucking very old, very dated clout I think they're called clout, go clout goggles. They call them clout goggles on my fucking face. But I love the fucking, you know, I love the contrast between the type of things. But anyway, um, had a good time. Had a fucking good time. Cannot complain.